Hi everyone, this is GKCS. We are talking about consistent hashing now. So this is, as you can expect, relevant to the concept of hashing objects. So consistent hashing has certain properties and this is something that you need to know if you are building systems, if you're building systems which can scale uh, to a large extent. So many of these terms that I'm stating right now might be you know jargon for you you might be saying what do you mean scale what do you mean systems so if you have let us say a box just a just a computer which is running a program right and someone your comes to you and says that you know what i really like your algorithm i'll pay you money just to use your algorithm okay so there's this person over here who has their cell phone and they can connect to your box, your computer. They want to use your algorithm, get the result and every time they do that, they pay you some money or maybe at the end of the month or whatever. But keeping the money bit aside, keeping the sales, marketing, everything aside, we have technical specifications, right? This algorithm needs to run for the customer to be happy and you to be happy in turn. So. When I say that this is an algorithm running on a computer, this is like a server, right? That's what it means. A server is something which serves requests. And when that person is connecting through the mobile, they're technically sending a request, okay? You, they uh, send a request, your algorithm runs, you understand what they want, Let's say the algorithm is a facial recognition algorithm which gives them mustache, right? So your response is going to be having that image sent back. So your server takes requests, sends back response. Now, let's say one person comes to you and they're damn happy. They're really, really happy. So they tell all their friends and you have thousands and thousands of requests coming in. Your computer cannot handle this anymore. So what you do is you add another computer. Because you know, you're getting a lot of money from all these people. Now you can afford to buy a new computer, a new server. If you can do this, there's one problem. Where do you send the requests? Like if there's a second person, then should the request go here or should the request go here? At the bare minimum level, if you have, let's say, n servers, you want, in general, to balance the load on all of these servers. Now, you can imagine all of these servers actually carrying load. These requests are things which they need to process. So the server has load on it. This is pretty important, right? And the concept of actually taking n servers and trying to balance the load evenly on all of them is called load balancing. Okay. So this is our very simple problem. What we are going to try to do is take these requests and evenly balance the load on all of our n servers. And the concept of consistent hashing will help us do that. So you want to evenly distribute the weight across all servers. You'll get a request ID in each request, right? So that request ID is, you can expect uniformly random. So when the client says, when the, when the mobile actually sends you a request, it randomly generates a number from zero to M minus one. And what happens is, this request ID is sent to your server. What you can then do is take this request ID, I'll call it I, or I'll call it R, R1, and hash it. When you hash it, you get a particular number. Let's say M1. This number can be mapped to a particular server. How? Because you have N servers, you take the remainder with n, 
whatever index you get here, you just send that to the respective server, right? So let's say you have four servers, S0, S1, S2, and S3. R1 is 10. When you pass it through your hash function, you get the value 3. 3 mod 4, n is 4 in our case, is 3. So this will go to bucket number. This request R1 will go to the server 3. Okay. Another example, h of 20. Let's say this somehow gives you 15. Uh, and mod 4 again, this gives you 3. So R2 also goes to 3. And finally, if we have h of 35, um, when hashed gives you 12, this mod 4 gives you 0. So R3 maps to the first server. Right? And in general, because this is uniformly random, and your hash function is uniformly random, you can expect all of the servers to have uniform load. So each of the servers, if there are x requests, will have x by n load, and the load factor is 1 by n. So everything is perfect, and that's all we need to do. Hmm. Except, what happens if you need to add more servers? We said that initially our clients are very happy with us. So we are getting viral or for some reason, you know, people are really, really hitting our servers a lot. What happens if that happens? We need to add more servers. S4. But now there's a problem. The requests which are being served here are completely bamboozled. The request ID, so when you pass them through the hash functions, the values you are getting, four. 3, mod 4. This has to change. Now you have in total 5 servers. So 3 mod 5, R1 has to go to server 3. So that's okay. What about 15 mod 5? This has to change. It has to go to server 0. Because this is 0. Right? What about this? 12 mod 5. This is equal to 2. So this request R3 again has to change and go to S2. And this is very clearly illustrated in a pi diagram. Right, this is your pi. Initially you had 4 servers. So the pi was 25% for every person. Right? So this is having 25, 25, 25, 25. So they have 25 numbers assigned to them. Now, when the fifth server came in, this had to lose five of its buckets. So there was a change of five buckets. This had to take these five buckets, so that is plus five, go up to 40. Right? So instead of 50, it goes up to 40 only. So this lost 10 buckets. So that's 10 buckets changed. When I mean buckets, I just mean numbers. So those are just numbers which it lost. Um, so this is up to 40 now. This server S3, or rather S2. So this is S0, S1, S2 has to take these 10. So that's plus 10 as a change, plus it goes only up to 60 now. So instead of 75, it goes only up to 16, so that's 15, plus 15 buckets changed. Now S2 is done, we go to S3, which is the last server that we had, and this now has to go only up to 80. So what happens is it lost so it has five buckets remaining in its old section. It lost 20 buckets here. And it had to take 15 buckets from here to have a total of 20 in S3. Okay, 
So that is 15 buckets added to it and 20 buckets lost. And finally, S4 has to actually take 20 buckets. So the cost of the operations, if you see, the cost of the change in this is 5 plus 5, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 100. So in total, the change was 100, which is actually your entire search space. Now, why is this such a big deal? You know, okay, 100 changes, the whole thing changed, so what? Well, because in practice, the request ID is never random, or it is rarely random. The request ID usually encapsulates some of the information of the user. For example, the user ID. So if I hash Gaurav, uh, this hash is going to give me the same result again and again and again, because the hash function is constant. If I'm getting the same result, it means that when I model it with n, it's going to send me to the same server again and again and again. Now why not use that information? If I'm being sent to the same server again, and if there is something like fetching a profile from a database, why should I do that all the time? Why not store it in the local cache? Right? That seems like a smart thing to do. Depending on the user ID, so instead of R1, I'll, I can call it U1, but I'll still call it R1. So depending on the user ID, we can send people to specific servers, and once they're sent there, you can store relevant information in the cache for those servers. But through this policy, what's going to happen is the entire system changes. All users are now haphazardly sent to different places and all the useful cache information you had is just dumped. It's useless. Almost all of it is useless now. Because the numbers that you were serving completely changed. So what you want to avoid is a huge change in the range of numbers that you're serving. If you're serving from this to this, then a small change is what you want here. If you're serving from here to here, then you don't want a huge change here. What you want is a tiny change here. So in a new pie chart, what's going to happen is, if this is the pie chart, and this is the quartered thing, what I would like to do is take a little from this first server, so that is, that is this bit, take a little from the second server, take a little from the third server, and take a little from the fourth server, such that the, the sum of these areas is going to be 20%. Right, because you added one server, you have five servers, you want 20% on each, so the sum of these areas should be 20%, but the overall change should be minimum. That's the general idea why uh, the old standard way of hashing doesn't work in this case. We need more advanced approaches and that's where consistent hashing comes in. The topic that we're going to be talking about today is relevant to hashing and it's called consistent hashing.